Greetings to my fellow landlocked surfers. Today I have exciting news for you. I'm sharing what is probably the number one trick that I know for my favorite trick, the backside bird slide. This one little thing makes all the difference in the world to take your bird slides from okay looking to fantastic looking. I got into surf skating big time because my favorite thing to do is to surf. However, living eight hours away from the nearest ocean, I don't get to do it a whole lot. Two times a year if I'm lucky. So in the meantime, I find other ways to get my surfing fix. Like surfing the standing waves of the frigid rivers here in Canada, or creating my own tarp barrels in a parking lot near my house. Winter takes up a huge chunk of the year here in Ottawa. So I've made the best of it by getting my own POW surfer and surfing the slopes on my bindingless snowboard. My channel, Mark the Landlocked Surfer, is all about finding those alternatives so that you can get your surf fix. All right, so today we're gonna to talk about doing bird slides. We're gonna talk not just about how to do them, but how to make them look better. We're gonna talk about how to make them look stylish. And to do that, you wanna have maximum extension. You wanna have a nice arc to your slide. So I'm going to give you some tips today on how to do that. So this is what my first bird slides looked like when I began to do them on banks. And don't get me wrong, I was stoked when I did these, so much so that I put them in my YouTube videos. But looking back now, I see they're a little bit inelegant, and I've learned a lot of things along the way. What I want to do today is help you guys to speed up your progress to get past this awkward stage into really sharp looking bird slides. Okay, pause right there. Let's take a closer look at that last bird slide I just showed you, side by side compared with one of the ones that I'm doing today, now that I've refined my style. On the left, I'm instinctively reaching out in front of me as a safety mechanism, compared to on the right, where I'm getting low but reaching behind me. So now on the left, you see what looks like an old man crouched down on the ground looking for a lost contact lens. Whereas on the right, you see what looks like a stylish surfer who's just chucked buckets of water with a really nice slashed bird slide. And then to close it out, on the left, you see me doing some kind of hand-stepping breakdancing move to get my board back down the ramp. And on the right, I'm just closing out that really smooth slide, getting my feet back underneath me and riding away. In this more subtle comparison, we have a good bird slide on the left and a very good bird slide on the right. The approach on both of these is almost identical, but let's slow it down and look at the one on the left. You can see that as I initiate my slide, the movement isn't continuous. There's a little bit of skitters as my wheels are sliding, so the arc isn't complete, and my arm is flailing around a little bit. Now look on the right, and you can see that the pace of that arc is continuous throughout the slide, and my upper body is staying nice and still and controlled. These differences are subtle, but when you see someone doing this in person, or you see a video clip that catches your eye, those tiny little attention to detail things are what makes the difference. Alright, so one of the ways to get maximum extension in your bird slides is you want to think not reaching ahead of you. When you initiate your turn, you want to have your momentum going up the bank. You're going to actually reach behind you. So by doing that, you're unweighting your board so it's going to slide easier. And it's also going to let your board continue up the ramp so that you can really extend out and get a really nice extent. Now that you know what we're shooting for, let's go try it out. I'm assuming you already know how to do a bird slide on flat, so trying it on bank is a little bit different. What I would recommend when you first try it, just go, don't worry about sliding, just do a carve with your hand down behind you in the position you would have it when you're sliding. Try that a few times until you're comfortable, and when you're ready, when you have the speed you're ready to approach with, it's time to give it a go. And don't be afraid to approach with speed. Once you get your hand down, it's going to slow you down, and because you're low to the ground, even when things do go wrong, the falls are pretty tame with your momentum going up the bank. So as you hit the upper slope of the ramp, as you start going up the ramp, you should start winding your body to get ready for your slide. And then as you get your back hand down, at the same time as you're doing that, you're going to start cranking your upper body your arm, your shoulders in to initiate that turn. Move your weight 
on the balls of your feet and on your toes. Now for me, I actually like to have the edge of my back foot right over the edge of the toe side there so I can get some extra purchase when I slide that. Once you've initiated your slide, you should stay tucked for the first 90 degrees. Once you've neared the peak of your trajectory, that's when you want to start pushing out your back leg to extend it. However, you should keep your front knee at least halfway bent to keep control of your slide. As you get more experience, you can learn how to extend both legs, but when you're starting out, using your front leg to keep the board within recoverable range is a good practice. Here are a few clips of what a bird slide looks like when you don't extend that back leg. They still work fine, they still get you around, they just don't look quite as stylish. As you're bringing your slide around, your eyes should be always focused on that landing spot. Aesthetically, my preference is bird slides that have only one hand planted, but use two if you want, especially when you're starting out. They can still look really great when done well. So here's the big secret. To do these incredible bird slides, the key is to over-rotate. Over-rotating your board 270 degrees looks super stylish, but it's also functional. If you're fully extended, your board could be up to 4 feet away from where you want it to be when you're ready to ride back down that ramp. So imagine yourself fully extended, and if your board was pointed straight back down the ramp, Unless you're an Olympic gymnast, you're not going to be able to spring your upper body back up and over your board. You need to get that board back under your core. Over-rotating with your hand as a pivot point means that you're doing a bit of a speed check with your slide, which will allow you to get your board pointed back towards you rather than straight down the ramp. So that's going to help you to be able to reel your feet and your board back to the rest of your body. So there it is, my secret is out of the bag, and all of you will soon be doing these perfect, impeccable backside bird slides. I hope you found this useful. Just for your information, I have set up a Buy Me A Coffee page for anyone that finds that my tutorials have been helpful in progressing their surf skating, or are appreciative of some of the time that I've taken to answer your questions. Um, that's very much appreciated if you do contribute, but even if not, just super stoked to have people following my pages and appreciating the time that I put into this work. Thanks so much for watching. As usual, I really appreciate those of you who've subscribed, who've liked, and who've given me your comments, and we'll see you next time.